An MRI scan is an imaging test. It stands for magnetic resonance imaging and essentially uses the behavior of hydrogen protons that are in our body uh, within a magnetic field to get images of that body and the parts you're imaging. Obviously for a heart, that is imaging the heart. Now, importantly, it does not use X-rays or ionizing radi radiation like other X-ray based tests, such as a CT scan. Cardiac MRI is essentially an MRI scan of the heart rather than of other parts of the body, be it the knee, the brain or whatever the part is. There are some technical differences in that an MRI scan of the heart needs to be able to compensate for an organ that's beating and essentially moving within the chest, but this has been now uh, very well established and, and technically very well developed. So the patient experience is really very similar. Um, importantly, we ideally want to have the patient's heart in the middle of the scanner. Um, and also as a patient, you will uh, need to wear some ECG leads, some little electrodes that help the scanner know when your heart is beating uh, to help with acquiring the images smoothly. And you will have, rather than a coil to uh, help receive the signal round your knee, if your knee is being scanned, you will typically have a coil lying on your chest. But broadly, a cardiac MRI is essentially an MRI scan, but of the heart. Echocardiography or ultrasound of the heart remains a widely used and often first line imaging test for heart disease. However, MRI is increasingly being used and sometimes as a first line test. If patients have difficult uh, echocardiographic studies for various reasons, then MRI uh, can be a very valuable alternative. And actually often MRI is performed after finding abnormalities on an echocardiogram. One of the reasons it's used increasingly is because of its ability to assess so many different aspects of the heart, potentially in a single test. One of the advantages of MRI of the heart over echocardiography is its powerful ability to identify the particular nature of tissues that are being imaging, and particularly to identify with the use of gadolinium-based contrast agents, scar tissue within the heart. And importantly, the pattern and distribution of that scar tissue within the heart and MRI imaging can help indicate the cause. For example, heart attack damage has a particular pattern that might be different to heart muscle abnormality, not due to heart blood supply issues. And essentially, actually the pattern can often diagnose the particular reasons for abnormality in a scan. So although it might be possible to establish a precise diagnosis from echocardiography, in some cases it is more possible from cardiac MRI and also there can be less variability in cardiac MRI imaging in terms of the assessment of size and function of the heart and the accuracy in terms of the thickness of the heart muscle uh, can in some cases be measured uh, better by MRI. So most people can be scanned successfully. The main group of patients who are um, perhaps not suitable will be more challenging patients with severe claustrophobia. Um, however, patients with milder degrees of claustrophobia can usually manage to get comfortably through a scan once there's been good explanation of what's going to happen or with adjuncts like prism glasses so you can look down the scan or by closing your eyes before you go in the scanner or sometimes with very light levels of sedation. But actually what we found with our technologists who are very experienced in dealing with patients with claustrophobia is that actually the reassurance during the scan, the understanding of what to expect and the knowledge that you are being constantly monitored and have a buzzer that you can speak to the staff organizing the scan at any point is enough to help get them through the scan. Another group of patients who historically have been told they shouldn't have an MRI scan are patients with pacemakers or ICDs, so implanted um, cardiac devices. Um, but actually, uh, certainly at our centre and supported by evidence that's been published, most patients, whether they have a new device that's been tested in MRI environment or an older device that hasn't, can be scanned safely, providing that device is programmed correctly. I emphasize it can still be problematic if you do not take the correct measures and monitor the patient carefully. But actually, if you program the device correctly and understand what the patient has and what the potential implications are, almost all patients can be scanned safely. So cardiac MRI 
requires the patient to lie on the MRI table, ideally with the heart centered inside a small tunnel uh, that is enclosed by the strong magnetic field. If the patient is going to need administration of gadolinium-based contrast or any medication during the scan, for example, to assess the adequacy of the blood supply to the heart, then a small cannula or plastic tube will be inserted into a vein before the scan. Importantly, before the scan, one of the team will explain exactly what's going to happen and what to expect during the scan. And you will obviously be able to see the scanner before you walk into the scanner room. Additionally, you will have to do a safety checklist to make sure there is no reason why it would be unsafe for you to go into the scanner and you will usually be changed to ensure you have no uh, metal objects um, on your body that you, you might have forgotten about. So safety is, is paramount, uh, but then it will simply be a case of lying on the scanner table with a coil on the chest and three ECG stickers to help the scan know when your heart is beating and you will usually be asked to hold your breath for periods of around 10 to 15 seconds at a time during the scan while we require the images. However, if for any reason you're struggling with holding your breath, we have different types of images where we can obtain usually diagnostic images without necessarily needing to hold your breath scan as many times.